Now, welcome back to, we're on session 32 of, of, uh, of math so far. Let's just sit back and say, okay, we've said that graphs is a big section, okay? In this PCA, we are going to find the equations of graphs given points, all right? Or given some information. Now, remember, okay? What can we be given? We can be given, whoops, let me just go back to, to black. Okay. So we could be given points on a graph, okay? Or we could be given a, a, a sketch showing um, points and um, shape maybe so points on the graph okay this is in text in text form the question here is or rather the secret is read read and read the question okay the same for analytical geometry read the questions we are not used to okay doing um, word sums at this point. But here, where we're doing this and analytical geometry, a lot of information is given in the actual writing itself. So the key is to read it, okay? Because they will tell you, right? They will say, in the blurb, they will say, this straight line joining, the parabola, the hyperbola, or, yep, the exponential, okay? This curves here, they will give us a straight line. Or they will tell us it's a hyperbola. Or they will perhaps give us something like this, okay? Where they've given us the asymptote, they've given us Q, right? Or exponential, they might give us something like that. And you can see again. So they will give us certain, either the shape, let's just consolidate, either the shape they'll give us via a drawing, and you can then see it's an exponential graph, all right? Or they're going to, in the text, tell us what it is. That allows us to do what? It allows us to identify and write down the standard form. The trick to this, this key, the absolute key, is the standard form. Because what you're going to do is you're going to identify the standard form. You're then going to look at the points we're given or the shape that's drawn, the graph, and we're going to put in the coordinates, the x's and y's, or the q if we're given it, or the c if it's a straight line, right? That is all we're going to do. This section is actually extremely simple, all right? But you just have to follow the recipe. So the first recipe is read it and identify which standard form. So let us say step one is read question and identify which standard form form to use, okay? Let us say an example. Say they ask to find the equation of the straight line passing through the point A, A of minus 3 and minus 1, and B of minus 8 and plus 6. Okay? Right. Identify the standard form to use. They told us it's a, a, the graph of the straight line. What's the standard form? Y equals MX plus C. So we write it down. Write down the standard form. Y equals MX plus C. Right. We're doing quite, quite well so far. Right, the next is sketch it, okay? Next is sketch, whoops, okay? 
Next is sketch it. Just, just roughly, okay, just give yourself an idea. So we say minus 8 and 6 and minus 3, minus 1. So my graph is going to be something like that, right? Can you see? Minus 8 and 6 and minus 3, minus 1. Now when you sketch it, okay, don't sketch it stupidly. Just give yourself sort of more or less where the point is. Because it, it shows you when you calculate stuff, it gives you a very good idea if you're right or if you're wrong, all right? Because drawing it, and no, you don't take a ruler and measure it, but more or less. So, for example, I mean, on my pad here, I've got the, the, the block lines. So I can say, right, that can be one, two. You can use the, the ruled lines of your, of your paper. So that's going to be one, and then you just guess the opposite way, right? Just more or less, because they're not going to give you points like minus 65 and whatever, even if they do, right? You just give it a, a, a more or less shape, an idea. So I can straight away, so, all right, for example, they could have given us that graph instead, right? Instead of the blurb, the verbal stuff, they could have just given the graph and asked for the equation of that line there, right? And they would have said, give the equation of f of x or g of x or whatever it might be, okay? Okay, standard form, all right? Now, in this case, we say y equals mx plus c, right? Let me just go back to my y equals mx plus c. There we go, I've written it down. Now, next step, step three, look at data or sketch given. Okay, why? Well, look and see do we know what the point C is? Can we identify C? Okay, the y-intercept. Can we identify the y-intercept? Okay, that's the question we need to ask ourselves. Well, what would it be? The y-intercept is where x equals 0. So they may have given us a point 0 and y. That would be c. Okay? And the same goes for a parabola. They might have given us q, the point where it goes through the, the, the y-axis, also the turning point of a parabola, right? Okay. Now, in this case, therefore, we say, no, nah, they haven't given us any of that. Now, there's two ways of doing this. First of all, you can say, okay, they've given us two points. Okay, here there's now two ways. Two ways to do. Okay, way number one is find M, the gradient, from delta Y over delta X is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Right? And what did we do? The reason we made this little sketch over at the top there, wherever my sketch there, the reason we made the sketch, okay, is we go and we say, okay, you are x1, x, uh, y1. You are x2, y2. Label them with your pencil, okay? Label them with your pencil. Don't just say, oh, I know it, because you can interchange them very easily, okay? And that, of course, is huge marks down the tubes, all right? So we label them and we can then plug in y2 minus y1. Let me just get back to black. y2 minus y1 is going to be, in this case, 6 minus, um, uh, minus, uh, minus 1. Okay. Over, and x2 is going to be uh, minus 8, minus, can you see? It doesn't matter which one you chose as x1 or x2, as long as you're consistent. Keep the same uh, um, method all the time. And it's minus 8, minus, and minus 3. Okay. Is going to be um, 6 minus minus 1 is going to be 7. Minus 8 plus 3 is going to be minus 5. So it's going to be 7 over 5, I think. Minus 7 over 5, all right? Yep. So it's minus 7 over 5. So that's that. So we say, okie dokes, 
right? Therefore, we now know that the graph of this is y is equal to minus 7 over 5, x plus c. Okay, now what don't we know? Okay, we don't know, uh, uh, we don't know c, rather. All right, we don't know c. That's what we're looking to find now. How do we find c? Okay, what do we do? Find c, okay, substitute any known point, x and y. All right, so then I can say, well, which one did I do here? I said um, we put in the point um, uh, minus 3 minus 1, right? And we said minus 3 minus 1, all right? We said, let me just go down a little bit. Okay, we know the point of uh, minus 3 and minus 1. That's given, right? We know it. So put it in. So x and y. So minus 1 is equal to um, minus 7 over 5 times uh, minus 3 and plus c. Okay, so minus 1 is equal to uh, 21 over 5 plus c, and therefore it's going to be equal to, c comes out to be equal to, minus 26 over 5, minus 5 and a half, or I could have said here, given uh, minus 8 and 6. I could have then said, well, there's another x and a y, 6 must be equal to minus 7 over 5 times minus 8 plus c, right? And I'd say 6 is equal to, this becomes quite a long one, minus 50, uh, 6, 56 over 5. Okay, so 6 minus 56 over 5 is equal to c, and c comes out to be minus 5 and a half again. All right, so now I know my equation. That was not the simple one. That was actually quite a toughie. Uh, minus 7 over 5 x minus 5.5 or 26 over 5. All right? So that's the one way we could have done it, okay? Well, what's the other way? The other way, and the same way you can do for all, is you say given point A and given point B. You write down y equals mx plus c, standard form, or the same again, right? And now you substitute your two points in. So point A, in this case, was going to be, uh, it doesn't matter, let's pick any one, uh, minus 3 minus 1. And B is uh, minus 8 and 6, I think it was. Um, minus 8 and 6. Now subs in. We say, okay, X and Y. So minus 1 equals minus 3M plus C. And over here, I think you can see what this is going. 6 equals minus 8m plus c. Hello, look what we've got. We've got equation 1 and equation 2. What do I do? I say, okay, choose which variable to get rid of. In this case, c. So I say, right, therefore, 6 equals minus 8m plus c. There's my equation 2. Remember how to do this? We're recapping. I've picked, I'm getting rid of c. So I take equation 1 minus equation 2. Minus 1 minus 6 is minus 7. Minus 3 minus minus. Remember we said here you go minus 3 minus minus 5 equals, and you get your answer. In this case, it's minus 3 minus, um, oh, sorry. It's minus 3 uh, minus minus 8, and it gives me 5. M. Therefore, M is equal to minus 7 over 5. Then to find C, back, substitute into any one of those two equations. Do you guys remember how to do that? Yep. Straightforward. Okay. Let's say they say, find the equation of a parabola through the points A, 2 and 4, 
This is another example. Through the points A, 2 and 4, and through the points B, minus 6 and minus 12. Right, so what would we do? We would sketch it, wouldn't we, right? We would sketch it and we'd say, okay, uh, 2 and 4, 2 and 4 is likely to be somewhere there, and minus 6 is right down here, right? Minus 6, minus 12, and now we don't know. This could come like this, right? Or it could go that way as well. We don't know the shape, okay? Because they haven't told us. They've only given us two points and told us it's a parabola. Okay, one day I'll get these writings correct. Parabola. They told us, find the equation of the parabola through A and through B. Step one is what? Um, standard form. I just want to get rid of this graph over here because we don't want to confuse ourselves. Right? Okay. So we say, okay, point A is 2 and 4. Point B is equal to minus 6 and 12. What do I do? I write the standard form under each, okay? Because they didn't tell me if it's upside down or... So I don't know if A is negative or A is positive. So I'm just going to say the standard form is right AX squared plus Q. And I can say, right, there's my X and Y. 4 is equal to A times 2 squared plus Q. And over here... Y equals AX squared plus Q. Do the same. Subs in. 12 is equal to A times minus 6 squared plus Q. Okay, and what do we do next? Well, yeah, of course, multiply it out. 4 is equal to 4A plus Q. And this side, 12 is equal to minus 6 squared is 36A plus Q. Now, if you haven't noticed already... There's a pattern here, okay? The pattern is actually that we are going to be eliminating Q every time. So we say, right, that's equation one, and equation two is this guy. Equation two is that guy. So what are we now going to do? Right? We are going to write the one under each other because we don't have to manipulate anything, do we? We've got 12 is equal to 36A plus Q. Okay? In this case, we don't. We take equation 1 minus equation 2. That is going to be minus 8. Uh, 4 minus 36, if you're unsure, it's going to be, I think it's 32. Minus 32. Minus 32A. Uh, okay. Uh, minus 12. Whoops, sorry, it's minus 12, my bad. Look. I mean, just let me slow down here. Minus 6, minus 12. I even wrote it down wrong. What a sausage. Minus 12, right? Okay. All right. Uh, I thought that looked a bit weird. Uh, so, we've got here, all right? We're subtracting, and that's going to be uh, 4 minus minus 12, okay? It's going to be 16. All right. So, therefore... A is going to be equal to 16 over minus 32, which is minus a half. Okay? What do I do next? Next, straightforward. Next one, I'm going to say, okay, uh, let's just see. I'm going to back substitute. Back substitute. Okay? And what do I, I pick the simplest equation. So I back substitute into 4 is equal to 4a plus q. This is the simple one, isn't it? The other one is like minus this and minus I say, uh-uh, no. All right, uh, 4a plus q. So 4 is equal to 4 times minus a half plus q. What do I do next? I say, okay, 4 is going to be equal to minus 2 plus q. So Q is going to be equal to 6. So my equation is Y is equal to minus a half X squared plus 6. And you can now draw the graph. 
right straight away let's draw the graph okay we say it's going through at zero and six how do i know that there's q all right and the next thing i let y equals naught so i've got zero is equal to minus a half x squared plus six minus six is equal to minus a half x squared therefore multiply through by minus two 12 is equal to x squared x is equal to root 12 and you can have a look let's just have a look what is uh, square root of 12 is going to be 2 root 3 about three and a half about okay it's 3.46 so it's going to be about three and a bit and there she goes down like so all right this is about 3.5 plus minus and this is minus 3.5 okay just roughly okay i haven't drawn it accurately to scale all right so what are we doing We'll, we write and we look, either we're given a shape that tells us with points that are going through, the next one we'll, we'll have a look at is a, a hyperbola, okay? So essentially, all right, in summary with this stuff, and, and, and I'm going to do one more. In summary, we're going to say, right, if they've given us a shape, we can identify standard form. That's the golden rule, okay? Find the standard form. Write it down. Then, if you're given X's and Y's, which you are, okay, write them in, in the place of the X and Y. You'll end up with two simultaneous equations, and you can then solve for the outstanding one, the A and the Q, or the M and the C. All right, let's have a look here. Um, here's a, a, a hyperbola, all right? They tell us, this is an example, Example, they tell us in the blurb it's a hyperbola. Okay, so we've identified shape. So we say, right, therefore, standard form is y is equal to a over x plus q. And yes, okay, I will change my a's. a over x plus q. And let's look, we've given point a and point b. Point a they tell us is 1 and minus 2. And point B, they tell us is 4 and minus 3 and a half. Whoa. Okay. So we know the standard form over here is Y is equal to, we write it under each one. Y is equal to A over X plus Q. And Y is equal to A over X plus Q. And we do again. We just put in. The, um, we put in the, uh, the, the, the numbers we know. Well, let's have a look here. Okay, let's put in minus 2 is equal to A over 1 plus Q. So minus 2 is equal to A plus Q. Let's put in here, here's my X and there's the Y. So minus 3 and a half is equal to A over 4 plus Q, right? So, uh, what do I do with this? Always change it to minus 7 over 2 is equal to A over 4 plus Q. Let's get a bit more workspace. And we say now. So, therefore, multiply through by 4, right? So, therefore, how do we do that? Remember the rules from way back? Put in 4 over 1 times. Times 4 times 4. Okay. Can you see why we did that? Because we don't want to forget it. 2 goes in there, 2 minus 14 is equal to A plus 4Q. Okay? So what do I have to do? Okay? Um, let's have a look here. 14 plus A plus 4. Okay, now I can choose A, can't I? Then I don't need to manipulate. So I can say, okay, you are equation 1. And I can slide this under. There's no more work to be done there. Is A plus 4Q is equal to 2. Draw my line. And then say equation 1 minus equation 2. Minus 2 minus minus 14. Hello, if you bug, it, if you, if, if you bug by this, it's minus uh, 2 minus minus 14 is going to be 12. All right. It's actually minus 2 plus 14. 12 is equal to, ooh, that's gone, and that's minus 3Q. So Q comes out to be equal to minus 4, all right? 
Then what are we going to do? We are going to back substitute in. All right. And when we back substitute, we say, okay, into the easiest one, a over x minus 4. Okay. So therefore, minus 2 equals uh, a over um, 1 minus 4. And solve for a. a comes out to be equal to 2. Therefore, y is going to be equal to 2 over x minus 4. Right? That's what we do with these guys. So, and I'm going to, I've got another, another one to do, which I'll do in the, in, in the next one, because I'm running too short on time now. But in all of these, okay, all you do is identify the standard form, and then look what you're given. If you're given the coordinates of any points, you put those in as an X and a Y. Please remember, if you're given the coordinates of an asymptote, all right, Okay, let's say they tell us it's a hyperbola and they've given us a graph that looks like this, perhaps. Okay, and they say that this is at minus 4 and they've given us. Now we can see the standard form is y is equal to a over x plus q. All right, can you see here q straight away is there, isn't it? That is q because it's the asymptote. You can't put in the number of zero because x can't be zero. You only input the values of x and y where you're given x's and y's. Okay? The ordered pair. Okay? Okay, I'll do the other one. And remember, these we do quite a lot in, in exam and test prep. I uh, look forward to seeing you. The next session we're going to do is uh, exponential. And then we're going to do some graph interpretation. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye.